Mosquitoes, those annoying insects that never seem to miss a barbecue, do a lot more than leave an itch to scratch. But help is on the way, and leave it to David Pogue to find out about it. The deadliest animal on Earth is not the shark, or the snake, or the scorpion, or even us. Can you guess? It's the mosquito, like the one in this model at the American Museum of Natural History. The diseases they carry kill over a million people a year, and in the warming climate, they're spreading to new places. In 2013, a particularly nasty species arrived in Fresno, California, Aedes aegypti. She's evil. This is a female that will bite you multiple times. She's very, very aggressive. Jody Holman works for Fresno's Mosquito Control Department. The one thing that you can say with, with great certainty is we don't have any very strong methods of control for this particular mosquito. Of course, spraying insecticide kills mosquitoes, but that kills other bugs too. So how do you solve a problem like aegypti? That's where Verily comes in. What I wanted to do was a variation on something called the sterile insect technique. After nine years at Google, working on its Chrome web browser, Linus Upson wanted a bigger challenge. And Verily, a Google sister company, was willing to fund his experiment. If a sterile male mates with a fertile female, she'll still produce and lay eggs, but they won't hatch. Each generation gets smaller and smaller, and you can actually completely remove mosquitoes from an area. So Upson hatched a plan build a factory that churns out millions of special male mosquitoes, each carrying a harmless natural bacteria that makes him incapable of reproducing. Release those males to mate with the wild females, with the EPA's blessing, of course, and presto, the mosquito population plummets. In theory. Oh, wow. Do you have an airlock? Remember, leave the mosquitoes in. Yeah. Pete Massaro, Google's director of automation, gave us a rare tour of Massaro's marvelous male mosquito-making machinery. Is it taking those now bags filled with food and L1 larvae, it's putting it onto trays. Those are gonna then enter into the larval rearing robot. For the next six days, this robot will keep the mosquitoes warm, feed them, and keep them company. The females are slightly bigger than the males. The next step is to separate the boys from the girls using a glorified sieve. We're able to separate 97 to 99% of the males and females. But 99% isn't enough. Releasing any females might make the problem worse. So this machine photographs each bug, studies the picture to determine the sex, and then blows away the females. And, and that works. That has worked so incredibly well that, you know, to our knowledge, no females have ever left this factory. Finally, these vans release the sterile males into the wild. Senior scientist Jacob Crawford was in charge of measuring the results. I very clearly remember a huge drop in the hatch rate. I stood up and, and did a dance. I mean, that was our first field data showing that this, this, this could work. This could really work. It really did work. We got over 95% suppression of the wild population. Your first outing, and it was that effective? And we hope to make it even more effective still by releasing over larger areas for longer periods of time. Debug Fresno ran for three summers, 2017, 18, and 19, and that was it. It was a three summer prototype to work out the bugs. And the problem with the sterile insect technique is that if you don't keep releasing the modified males, the mosquito population bounces right back. So in 2020, sure enough, those traps started to light up again. Those were heartbreaking conversations to have. I'm sorry, I know we had this really great effective program, but it can't come back. But the Fresno test proved that Linus Upson's idea really works without chemicals, genetic engineering, or affecting any other species. Verily is now setting up the program in places where mosquitoes actually kill people, like Puerto Rico and Singapore. Of course, Verily is a Silicon Valley tech company. It's not doing all of this for free. Uh, the goal is to make this a sustainable business. The pitch to governments, we'll get rid of your mosquitoes for less than you're spending on the diseases they spread. It's been a strange, satisfying second act in Linus Upson's career. Wow, 
I mean, it's not a web browser, right? It's not, it's, it's nature, it's not all within your control. Different kind of bugs we're dealing with. <laughs> Talk about unsung accomplishments, David, who knew? And why do I have the feeling there's plenty more where that came from? There is, Jane. That mosquito story is also episode number one of my new podcast. It's called Unsung Science, and each week's episode tells the backstage story of a breakthrough in science or tech from the characters who did the breaking through, like the biochemists who figured out how to get the mRNA vaccines to work, or the NASA engineers who got the rover to land on Mars all by itself, or the storm chaser who discovered that something weird is going on with Tornado Alley, or the linguist who makes up the fake languages for Hollywood movies. It's all free at unsungscience.com or wherever fine podcasts are played. And if you listen to episode one, you can find out how that mosquito program is doing in Singapore. <laughs>